Hello, welcome to another episode of Scripting Ghidra. In today's episode, we'll be reconstructing a control flow, but I do recommend watching previous ones where we were, yeah, changing the memory map layout and also we were extracting some extracting and converting some data in the in the program. Today is about the control flow and it's actually might be useful and it was uh, for me useful in one of the uh, recent CTFs. Google uh, CTF had a challenge called Exceptional, which this script that we'll be writing or analyzing today could be used. And also, for example, for the crack me ones, Armageddon is also using similar trick to obfuscate the control flow and we can uh, reconstruct such flow using this script. So let's look how those programs uh, actually look in Ghidra. So I have them both open. Let's uh, look maybe from Armageddon. Okay, I don't need to open this new one because I already have it open. So, okay, this is exceptional. This is Armageddon. So if we look at the source code, we'll see that actually it's being really split into small chunks. So it's basically even one instruction and then the jump, one instruction and the jump and some, of course, some garbage to throw the disassembler uh, off, but actually Ghidra uh, quite nice recognize that this is not any instruction. And actually in, in case of Armageddon, it's not that bad because Ghidra actually managed to reconstruct the function quite good, although we cannot modify it here since it's not really treated as a function and only the full function can be changed here. But also if you would like to analyze the source code, maybe not the source code, but the um, disassembly entirely, it's difficult because we don't have it. We have those um, yeah, branch instruction everywhere and it's quite confusing. In case of exceptional, it's quite different because yeah this is a function call here and actually it's really Ghidra correctly analyzed those functions but we see just one instruction and then a call and another instruction and a call and another instruction and a function call and so on and so on so it's quite difficult to actually get the hold of the whole uh, program here because of those uh, additional calls but yeah we can script Ghidra to extract what we are interested in and omit all of those uh, additional calls or all, all branch instructions uh, altogether. So how we can do that? Let's see at the script. They are quite similar, although there are some small differences that we could notice here, but maybe let's uh, try to look at the exceptional. So basically, let's omit the first three lines. Of course, we need some imports and the, this line is just for the formatting. So we start at some address and then just to be safe, I have like a limiter. So basically after so many instructions extracted, I'll just stop. So basically it doesn't, yeah. And in a, in a loop that doesn't exit. So basically what we do, we take the instruction at an address and we can use just get instruction at passing the address. And then we can use on the instruction, get the flow type. And basically if the flow type is unconditional call, we will uh, do our analysis. But of course it's not enough to have just an unconditional call because the other instruction in this code could also be unconditional call like here puts is also an unconditional call so we are only interested in those that are let's call it local function so basically they are not external to to our library and we can do that probably on many ways in many ways but what i choose was just the simplest one so basically i'm checking if the symbol that is associated with the address that we are jumping to contain this fun underscore uh, string. So basically here we see the, all those locals have the fun prefix and I'm just 
yeah, distinguishing based on that. It may be not the best distinguisher, but at least in this case it worked. But how we can get this symbol? Because what we only have is the instruction and instruction doesn't actually have that. But what we can do, we can take the destination address. And again, here, I guess it could be extracted in a different way. Here, I'm just like converting string, uh, cutting out some parts of this string and converting to address. And then based on this address, we can get primary symbol associated with this address from current program symbol table and with uh, get primary symbol. And based on that, we get the uh, symbol and one of the properties of the symbol is the name and we can just convert it to string and find out if this fun is in this string. Actually, yeah, it doesn't really check if it's a prefix, it just checks if it's uh, inside this string. And if it, if it is there, then we have our new address that we'll be uh, extracting instruction from. And we just, yeah, load the instruction since we did the loading before the while loop and we just continue. So basically we do not print those calls because we want to omit them. We just want to print all the rest instruction. And if it's an unconditional call, we'll just, yeah, omit that. And if it's not unconditional call, we'll just print the instruction with uh, this additional code unit format call. This is basically just to get the, um, all the symbols resolved. So basically we could just use print instruction here, but then it would print just an address. If we have like Ghidra in Ghidra, when we look at this call here, it says call puts. But if you would just print call instruction, it will be call and an address or like a, yeah, just a hexa decimal value where this call is uh, pointing to. And of course we want to preserve as much information as we want or as uh, it's there. So we need to use this code unit format with get representation string. And for that, we need this first line, which actually says that we want to print uh, all the info that is uh, available and with all those like true, 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 which doesn't say that much what actually each true stands for, but I guess we can always check the documentation and find out uh, what are those true uh, mean. So we'll just print the instruction, we'll get the next one. So actually we progress with our extraction of the code. And again, as I said, this is just for the, like be on the safe side, just yeah. a limiter. It's easy to change the limiter a value to extract as many instructions as we want. But of course, it's like safer to start with some small values and if it works, just uh, yeah, increase the threshold. And we can check if or whether it works. I have those scripts loaded in the script manager. So this is for the exceptional. I have, even though they are quite similar and we could probably unify those two scripts, I have them like a separate one scripts in Ghidra. So when I start this one, it actually executed and we can see that we got extracted uh, values. So we can actually see, so we have some RBP, move, layer. So it's actually, yeah, as to the in. So I guess it's not exactly this one that I'm looking at. So maybe let's just go to entry. Okay, this is also not, okay, I need to check what ad, what is the actual address. So it's 10 to be free C that I'm looking at. Okay, so it's not, let's just go there. I must have been updating the values. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the code. So actually from here, I'm printing, of course, if I update the, the address, it will print from wherever I want, but we can see, okay, as the in, as the in here, it's even, more info here as it uh, says that it's in uh, this BSS section and all the rest is like PLT, which even is doesn't show here originally. But yeah, the flow is extracted. If we uh, see here, it's like some call after the set booth. We see set booth here and we don't see the call. We see the actual values from from here and from here. And it goes on all the 
into all of the functions uh, until we reach how many instructions we want to extract. Yeah, and the same goes with the Armageddon challenge. Uh, we can already see execution here. So we, we extracted the code here. Here, I think it's from the start. So it's first instruction. Yeah, the, the jump is here, but then the next one and the next one and uh, uh, 58. So it's actually not from here. I have addresses here, so we can check it's 14 F4. 14, no, it's 10 4 F4. So it's from here. So the jump is first and then we have the STM db and the add and the sub and the str and so on and so on so we see we could extract the flow from the ghidra uh, using a script and i guess that's helps a lot if we want to analyze the source code as i said in case of armageddon it wasn't that hard because the code was clearly identified by ghidra as a like one flow it wasn't uh, the case in the exceptional from the Google uh, CTF, but yeah, as I said, maybe we want to look at the full uh, as disassembly and we can do by using uh, the script. So yeah, that's all. I will share the script uh, in a link below and I hope the video was useful and if so, please like and subscribe and see you next time when we'll be scripting Ghidra. Bye-bye.